Hi, Mike Kornbaum, Product Line Manager. So shifting gears, we're going to talk a little about the secure multi-cloud access. All right, multi-cloud is finally here, right? We're talking to a lot of our enterprise customers, and, and for the most of them, they are now truly adopting uh, multiple cloud providers, right? And if you look at the, the growth rates of uh, Azure and, and Google, right, they're investing a lot in their infrastructures. And you can see the proof is in the pudding here with uh, you know, how Microsoft's investments are paying off and they're becoming competitors in the marketplace to combat against uh, AWS. Same thing with Google, right? They're investing a lot. But so now it's time for customers to start thinking about how are they going to leverage all of these different clouds for their needs. And there's two problems Right, when you think about it from a networking perspective or the networking challenges, how do I get secure access to all of these different cloud providers? Right, and traditional, traditionally, you're going to have to use you know, either different VPN termination points within each of the clouds. You can put, say, different cloud genetics boxes out there in each of individual clouds, in the VPCs, the VNets, et cetera, or use their VPN termination points. But that just adds complexity and added cost. And it makes it difficult to migrate as well. Think about if I'm going to say I'm adopting AWS today and I want to migrate to Azure, or I want to use both in an active, active fashion for some applications. Now I have two different stacks to manage from a, a network integration standpoint. There's also the challenges with performance, right? So now you have remote, some maybe remote locations, and depending on which, which VPC regions you're in or which VNet regions you're in, you're going to have challenges to accessing those resources in a performance manner. Oh, and that's why Equinix and CloudGenix <coughs> have partnered to address the solution of, of a multi-cloud, <coughs> hybrid cloud access across the WAN. Right, so Equinix CloudGenix uh, jointly delivered a solution to address this multi-cloud and hybrid cloud access over the WAN, giving you uh, best performance to whether it's your SaaS applications or your IaaS applications or even your own hosted data centers. So if you think about it, what is Equinix, right? Equinix has uh, over 40 plus uh, pops across the world. They have relationships with all the carriers and all the cloud providers. Um, and, and they have this massive high speed backbone that they, they want to uh, leverage, right? And allow customers to leverage in order to access those, those IaaS resources. So what we've done is you take any branch that's CloudGenix enabled, right? And is able to connect to the closest Equinix pop. <coughs> And this is as a, as a service, right? CloudGenix as a service in their network edge service. Uh, is you're able to have those zero touch VPNs created to the CloudGenix nodes. It just shows up as another data center object within our system that you can then, through policy, send the traffic to the appropriate node depending on which region you're in. Now the traffic can ride that Equinix's high speed backbone to get to what the resources are in AWS, GCP, Azure, or SaaS applications like Office 365, Salesforce, and the like. That also, that solution can then extend to the hybrid cloud and the data centers. So if you think about it, most customers' data centers are either co-located in Equinix, or they're close enough geographically where you can get that high-speed connectivity if you wanted to into an Equinix data center pop. So the same exact solution of uh, connecting into, say, uh, multiple multi-cloud providers can be used to connect to on-prem data centers as well. So it gives you a simplified operational model from, from your WAN connectivity. I see I have a question. I'm trying to understand the, okay, it is uh, giving value to the Equinix, but as Cloud GenX, you can have the same solution in the cloud without needing them. So what, I'm trying to understand, so why don't you have your own cloud, you know? Right, so exactly, we, we'd have to build out our own network, our own wide area network, whereas Equinix has already done it. They've done it for years. They already have the partnership and agreements with all the different providers, whether they're the, uh, the carriers or the cloud providers. The cloud providers are actually co-located literally in Equinix, right? So they're in the, physically in the same building. So, and they've already built this interconnect, the, the giant metro rings already between all the different uh, Equinix pops. So why would we go and reinvent the wheel when we can just partner? But you can spin up your cloud blades in the cloud, you know. So we don't need to, that's okay. right. So, so the, 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 you bring up an important point uh, of clarification that we should do. You don't need a cloud blade in every pop location. 
right? Yeah. One of the very important, powerful things about the CloudBlaze architecture, it's not a data path integration, right? The, cl the CloudBlade is not sitting in the data path. It is a control management and operational function. So it programs, the, the CloudBlade programs the CloudGenix device directly, and the traffic goes from the CloudGenix device directly into Equinix in this case. Same way, when it's going to uh, Palo Alto's uh, Prisma solution or Zscaler, we're not taking the traffic, pausing it on the CloudBlade, and then taking it to Prisma. It goes branch directly into Prisma. The CloudBlade is programming the device directly. So because of that, the CloudBlade doesn't have the limitation that a lot of the other SD-WAN vendors that even try to build a similar architecture have, because then they now need to go take any solution they build and massively distribute across POPs. Sorry, maybe I misunderstood. So Cloud uh, Blade is not your data plane, it's a control controller? It's, 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 a, it's a control function, okay. right? So it's programming the device directly. So the, the traffic always, so in the, in the Cloud Genix architecture, unlike some of the other SD-WANs, traffic will always flow in direct paths. We don't have to take your traffic and populate it through our controller, and then, the, then it becomes too many ping yeah, no, no, in the cloud. Fine. So it's these are cloud blade. blades or these are data paths? Yeah, so, so the, the cloud Genix cloud blade programs the device and ensures that traffic is going directly into Equ entering the Equinix entry point and then traversing Equinix's high-speed backbone to exit out into the cloud. Yep. Now, you don't have to do it for 100% of your branches, right? You may, you may find that, you know what? Some of my branches in uh, Bulgaria, they're having a hard time accessing my server in Redmond. Maybe that one needs to enter the high-speed backbone that Equinix has entering locally. The rest of it is just fine. You don't have to do it for all applications. You might choose to do, do, for, do it for a small number of applications, right? So it really gives you the ability to take advantage of different kinds of backbones. And much like Equinix, other of Equinix's partner is Microsoft, right? Microsoft and Equinix partner on a whole bunch of things. Microsoft has a backbone, the Azure Virtual WAN. You have a similar integration for Microsoft properties, right? Equinix's power, it's cross-cloud. It works for SaaS, it works for every other application that you can think of. Mm -hmm. Hopefully that's helpful. Yeah. Is there a question? Yeah. Um, and, and kind of just in, in summary, right, when so you look at the solution that we've delivered, right, uh, there's three big benefits for customers. One, automated, secure access through zero-touch VPNs. Uh, the high performance access through the high speed backbone that Equinix already has, and 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 then that reliability of of that and the and that flexibility to be able to plug and play your cloud providers as you see fit. Mm -hmm. yep. Thank you. So, I'm sorry. So I do have one question about that. So then you 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 do have some sort of gateway that that tunnel is terminating That's in, inside of the cloud exchange fabric or correct it, but you don't have to buy any piece of hardware right. and, and rack and stack it it's all software it's as it's in their network edge service and their ecs yeah. fabric you, you can do hardware if you want to but you know with their software too okay yeah we we're, we're leveraging this this integration using the software stack right so this i'm guessing then this is going to be some type of subscription service to correct. Yep. Yeah. and i'm going to walk you we're going to do a demo i'm actually okay. going to walk through a, a demonstration Yep. of what that would look like. We're going to go through a quick uh, multi-cloud demo here, right? So what we're going to end up doing here is deploying a multi-cloud gateway uh, for the data center augmentation use case here, where, where I'm subscribing to Azure, Amazon, GCP, and I'm going to have that single termination point. So really, you log into the ECX fabric, you're going to pick uh, your subscription, right? We're going to subscribe to CloudGenix. So, and then we're going to walk through the onboarding process. It's a very simple process here, right? We're going to pick the region. I, I can obviously deploy multiple different regions. Just for this example, I'm going to pick Silicon Valley. I'm going to enter some basic information, right? I got to enter in my, my key, secret key, and all of that. I'm going to pick what type of model. And obviously, the model has just to do with what, what type of throughput service do I need, right? How much, how much throughput do I want to push through this, through this node from the WAN? And then obviously, the resulting on the LAN side. Uh, in order to access those different cloud providers. So we're just kind of walking through that here in the demonstration. Um, going to give some basic information, accept the order. Uh, scroll through here real quick. Uh, in, in the Equinix uh, ECX fabric, you have to give some uh, basic IP information in order to say, well, which, which IPs are able to connect in, right? What are my remote sites being able to connect in? But that's a restriction that they're lifting um, over time when, after this demo. And then we'll see here as soon as we hit, uh, we accept the uh, terms and conditions. Let's go here. We're supposed to read all of that. 
Yeah, of course. exactly. Of course, you need all of that, no problem. Yeah. And then success here, right? So it says, you know, about 10 to 60 minutes, we're going to have that service deployed. And now we come back to the CloudNX portal, and it just shows up as a, a device within your network. And you're able to provision it just like any other, any other CloudNX point, uh, ION device within your network. We're going to here assign it to our data center site, our Silicon Valley uh, data center site type. I'm claiming the device. I've assigned the device to my site. Right. This is all part of our onboarding process that we would know, that a customer would do with any other ion. So the, the the workflow a customer does doesn't change whether I'm doing a on-premise physical device, whether I'm in a branch, in a data center, or now in the cloud in Equinix. Right. We want to make that a seamless and a consistent model across. Again, putting in some basic information. You know, what's the device name? I'm going to give it some information about what my connectivity is. I scroll through here real quick. I'm going to say, all right, here's my connected device. Here, here's where I'm connecting to. <clears throat> and all I have to do now is I got the basic connectivity. I'm going to activate the site. I'm going to switch it into control mode. And now, automatically, any branch site that's in this network, I only have one in this example, but if I had, say, 1,000, they would build zero-touch VPNs to this data center site. And you can see here the VPN tunnels what came up. Well, also what I'm going to what we're going to show here is now I'm able to track the performance of those VPNs, right? What, what we call the link quality metrics, and then we'll use those metrics as we're making past selection decisions based off of the uh, la basically the last mile quality, right? So if I had dual internet circuits at that site, I could track the quality of both links, and I'm going to use those in an active active fashion.